Okay, this time we have f of x is x plus 3, g of x is 2x squared minus 1. So here's the two parts we're doing. Notice that both these parts have to do with f of x. So in the previous example, I showed that you could work this all out with numbers first. So you could do g of negative 1, get an answer. Then you can put that answer into f, and then you'll get your final answer there. Well, another way I want to show you is doing this part first. So what you could do is you could first, since it's asking us to find f of g of x anyway, we could first start by doing that one. Then whatever answer we get there, we'll just plug negative 1 into it and get our final answer for part A. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to do part B first. f of g of x, this is our definition for f of g of x. That says that we put the g of x inside of the f. So the g of x right here, I'm going to replace that with the expression that it goes with. So that's 2x squared minus 1. So this is saying put 2x squared minus 1 into this formula right here in place of the x. So to do that, I'm going to first start with the template. Now I have something and then I have plus 3, so normally I have an x there. Gets replaced with 2x squared minus 1. So 2x squared minus 1 will go in there. And then I'm just going to simplify it. So my final answer for f of g of x is going to be 2x squared plus 2. So 2x squared plus 2 is what I'm going to use now in order to answer part A. So for part A, I want to put negative 1 into the f of g formula. Well, that's this one here. So I have 2 times negative 1 squared, and then I have plus 2. So negative 1 squared is going to give you a 1, and so really you have 2 plus 2, which is going to equal 4. So therefore, the answer for part A was 4, and we got that by first doing part B, getting the expression for that, and then we just plug negative 1 into it to get 4. Okay, now we're going to do part C and D. We have g of f of 0 and g of f of x. So like my last time for parts A and B, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to start by doing g of f of x because it's asking us for that anyway. And then once I get that answer, I'll just put my 0 in and then that would be my final answer for part C. So let's start with D. This is g of f of x by using the definition. So f of x is x plus 3. I'll put that inside there in place of the f of x. This is saying that I got to put x plus 3 into here in place of x. So here's what it looks like. I have 2 and then I have my, here's my template. I have 2 times a space squared and minus 1. In the space right here, I'm going to put in x plus 3 because that's what's inside that parenthesis. I want to span this out. So to do that, what that really means is you're doing this. You're taking x plus 3 times x plus 3. So I'm going to do that part first. Remember, don't just uh, distribute the square into each one of those because then you're not going to get the middle term. You really have to multiply both of them out. So here's what it'll look like. You get x squared plus 3x and 3x is 6x and then plus 9. Then I'm going to multiply out by 2. I get 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 and then I have a minus 1. My final answer I can write here, 2x squared plus 12x plus 17. So that is going to be my uh, final an expanded answer for g of f of x. I'm going to use this one now and go back to answer part c. I need to put a 0 into this expression, so it'll look like this. 2 times 0 squared plus 12 times 0 plus 17. The first two are going to cancel out. You're left with 17, so g of f of 0 is 17, and here's our expanded answer for g of f of x. Okay, part e and f, we have f of f of x, and we have g of g of x. f of f of x, we're going to first start by writing out the definition that's f of f of x. We're putting f of x inside of itself. The first f of x, we're going to go ahead and replace that with x plus 3 because that's the expression that goes along with that. That's the formula we're using. And this is saying take x plus 3 and put it back in there in place of x. So here's what it looked like. You have a space right here and then you have plus 3. The space that's normally uh, the x, you're going to put in instead x plus 3 and then now you just want to simplify that. So if you simplify it, you're going to get x plus 6 and that's nothing more that you can do with that. That's your answer for f of f of x. Now let's do g of g of x. That's the same thing as 
putting g inside of itself. Okay, so that really means that you're going to replace the g of x and put in 2x squared minus 1. So I got to put 2x squared minus 1 into this x right here, and what that looks like is you're first going to start with the template. I have 2 times something squared minus 1. That space there gets filled in with 2x squared minus 1, and so now I'm going to do this. When you, when you square something, remember that you're really multiplying two of them out just like that. I'll first start by multiplying these. Inside I get 2x squared and 2x squared, that's going to give you 4x to the 4th power. Don't forget that you're adding the powers there, 4x to the 4th, minus 2x squared, and then another minus 2x squared is really going to give you a minus 4, so let's go ahead and, and get the final answer there, and then negative and negative will give you a plus 1. So here's what you get on the inside. Now we're going to multiply through by 2. You get 8x to the 4th minus 8x squared plus 2, but then don't forget there's an extra minus 1 on the outside. So the final answer you'll put for g of g of x is going to be 8x to the 4th minus 8x squared, and then you have plus 1.